Flying FPV is a whole lot of fun, but with the winter months upon us, flying outside often leaves your hands, well, frozen. So indoor FPV is another option. However, indoor presents a whole new set of challenges. You need a much smaller, much lighter vehicle and much more compressed gear. I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert the Sima X5C quadcopter into a live video ship. Now you've seen, you may have seen this vehicle and you see this camera underneath, that is not FPV, that's an HD recording. In order to fly indoor through a VR set or a monitor or a set of goggles, we need to convert this into FPV with a live video feed. And to do that, we're going to use 1.3 gigahertz. I bought this transmitter from ReadyMade RC. It is a 5 volt, 25 milliwatt, 1.3 gigahertz transmitter. And you might ask, Alex, why are you using 1.3 gigahertz? Well, houses are constructed of many walls and 5.8 gigahertz doesn't quite have the penetration that 1.3 gigahertz does. Also, 2.4 gigahertz being used for control, so that doesn't make 2.4 gigahertz video available. That leaves 1.3 gigahertz. And as you can see, this vehicle is a little bit small to use a circularly polarized antenna. So we're just going to use the stock dipole antenna. It should work just fine. ReadyMade also sells this nice little 5 volt camera. Works great indoors, works outside great and well light, but uh, at night it doesn't do so well. But these are 5 volt systems, so to get the voltage up from 3.7 volts up to 5 volts, you need a voltage regulator. And this is the Palalu voltage regulator, it's also sold by ReadyMade RC. It steps the voltage up from 3.7 volts all the way up to 5 volts, and I'll leave the links to these in the video description below. So the first step is to take this vehicle apart. There are many, many screws on this vehicle. So you're going to need a very, very fine screwdriver. A zero or a double zero is going to be the correct size. You're going to need to take off the propellers as well as all the screws around here. There are two screws also underneath the battery door. Be sure not to miss those. The vehicle will pry apart fairly easily and then I'll show you what's inside. Inside the vehicle, the wiring will look something like this. Over here, I put my voltage regulator, and over here, I put my video transmitter. And you might ask, why did I do that? That's because the receiver antenna is here on the vehicle. I want my transmitter and my noisy voltage regulator as far away from my receiver as possible. Remember, just a few millimeters can be all the difference in flying to the next room and around the house and only being able to get a few feet. I just used basic servo wire to wire this up. Somewhere between 26 gauge and 32 gauge works great. The pins are labeled in, out, and ground. Not to confuse you, my red is my 3.7 volts, my black is my ground, and my yellow in this case is my 5 volts. And you can see right here, I connected the output of the voltage regulator into the red wire of the video transmitter and that of my camera. Now, the power to the video regulator comes into this switch. I simply soldered it on to where the black wire meets the switch. This is the middle pin. The red wire is always hot, so you only want the system engaged when the video you only want the video engaged when the vehicle is on. As for the ground, I used the battery ground, which is a terminal right here on the board, and simply stacked the wires for the voltage regulator, the camera, and the transmitter all right here. Now, to get the video, I simply connect the yellow wire from the camera 
to the yellow wire of my video transmitter. Now you might ask yourself, Alex, what is this extra piece of coaxial cable and what is it doing? This is a notch filter. This filters out the 2.4 gigahertz harmonic out of this video transmitter. As you know, 2.4 gigahertz is what we're using to control the vehicle. All you do is take a piece of RG316 cable measure it exactly 1.6 inches long and short it. That means connect the center conductor and the shield and solder them solid. Yes, this seems like a short circuit, but to RF, it's not. Well, it is. To 2.4 gigahertz, this is a short circuit. To 1.3 gigahertz, it doesn't exist. Amazing thing about radio. Another thing I did is I drilled a small hole in the top of the vehicle body and run the antenna vertical as this way when I turn the vehicle I'm not exposing the null of my antenna. So now let's put this back, it, back together and see how it flies. Alright, I got my quadcopter all set up and ready to go. Got the uh, camera mounted on top. The propellers are in view a little bit, but the instant they start spinning, it's odd, they completely disappear. Um, I had to add a capacitor to the uh, voltage regulator because the instant I throttled up, the voltage would sink and the video would go out and it wouldn't resynchronize even when the motors were slowed back down. The 100 microfarad, or excuse me, 1000 microfarad capacitor seems to have fixed that quite nicely and didn't add too much weight, I don't think. So uh, now we'll take it for a test flight and, uh, well, no making fun of me, I'm a total noob when it comes to quadcopters, especially when it comes to flying them indoors. Apparently we have a visitor. Hi puppy. Puppy. Hi, puppy. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Obviously, I'm not the greatest pilot in the world, but I had a lot of fun, and apparently uh, my dog did too. So uh, until next time, guys, keep your wings in the sky.